Hey friends, welcome back to more Reddit stories from r slash I don't work here lady, where people get mistaken for being workers by some real oblivious people. So I hope you're all doing awesome, be sure to subscribe for more and let's get right into today's Reddit posts. I'm a teacher, give me back my phone. This happened a few days ago. I work as a substitute teacher at various local high schools. I am 24, but obviously look younger according to this teacher. Why aren't you in uniform? And no phones during school? said the angry teacher. I thought he was talking to a student, so I ignored him. Excuse me, don't ignore me, he said as he snatched my phone out of my hand. What the f***? Give that back. I'm not a student. That's detention for swearing at a teacher. You will get your phone back at the end of the day. Now you will come down to the office and tell the principal about how disrespectful you are being. By this point, I thought it would be funnier to let him complain to the principal who I play netball with and watch his reaction. He was raging, saying that I deserve to be suspended and that students always had their phones out, yada yada. The principal and I were just trying not to laugh before she told him I was a teacher too. And I say, now give me my phone back. Don't you have a class to teach? Because I do. I have never seen anyone go so red. Roadside Assistance Service, so I thought. Yesterday was quite the adventure to say the least. I was on my way to an important meeting when my car decided it was the perfect time to start making those I'm about to give up on you noises. I managed to pull over to the side of a less traveled road, popped the hood and stared blankly at the engine, as if my intense gaze would fix whatever the issue was. Spoiler, it didn't. Remembering I had roadside assistance through my insurance, I called them up, and they quickly dispatched a mechanic, promising Eddie would arrive in about 45 minutes. I got a confirmation text with the ETA, and so the waiting game began. Eddie was due at 4.30pm, and at 4.28pm a truck pulls up behind me. A guy jumps out, greets me with a warm smile, and asks what the trouble seems to be. I explain the situation and he nods, already moving to take a look at the engine. Like a pro, he immediately suspects the problem, grabs a tool and some kind of fluid from his truck, and gets to work. In no time, my car is running great. As he wipes his hands off on a rag, I ask about the paperwork I need to sign for the insurance. He looks at me, puzzled, and says, No, I just saw you looked like you needed help. It started to dawn on me. I asked if he was Eddie. Nope, I'm Mike. Just passing through and thought I'd lend a hand. My jaw must have hit the floor. I just let a total stranger tinker with my car and literally get his hands dirty, where I just stood there doing nothing and being completely useless. Embarrassed, I tried to pay him something, but he refused, saying, don't worry about it, just help someone out when you get the chance. Mike left as casually as he'd arrived, leaving me stunned. After waiting another five minutes for Eddie, I just decided to leave. I called my insurance to cancel the service call explaining that a random good Samaritan had fixed my car before their mechanic could arrive. So here's to you, Mike, the unexpected hero of my day. Your random act of kindness was a bright spot in what could have been a very stressful situation. Lady, I'm a cop, not a shelf stalker. I'm 26 years old and I'm a police officer who normally works night shift. On this particular day, I was in a training class that was scheduled from 0800 to 1700. Standard uniform attire for classes are the blue polo shirt with department logo on chest and khaki pants. I had my service weapon and badge on the right side of my hip and my handcuffs, extra magazine, and radio on the left side of my hip. After the class ended, I went to my local supermarket, known for low prices and blue shirts, to get some things for dinner. While I'm there, a little kid who looked around 9 to 10 years old walks up to me. The kid asks me, Are you a police officer? While pointing to my service weapon. Yes, I am, I said. I want to be a police officer when I grow up, he says with much excitement. The kid and his mom walk off and I go back to my shopping. I kneel down to look at some chips I'm thinking of getting when I hear someone clear their throat. I turn and see a lady who looks to be in her early to mid-forties. The lady glares at me and I go back to looking at the chips. Excuse me, are you going to help me or not? I need to know where the... I cut her off and said, Ma'am, I don't work here. You'll have to find an employee. Don't lie to me. You're dressed like an employee. You obviously work here. Now keep in mind I'm not wearing the yellow vest most employees wear. I'm just wearing a blue polo shirt and khakis. I stand up and turn to her, showing my department logo on my shirt and pointing to my badge. Ma'am, I don't work here. I'm an off-duty officer. 
I don't understand what went through her mind when she said, Stop lying. And why do you have a gun? You're not supposed to have a gun while working. Where's your manager? I sighed. I've dealt with many Karens on duty and I knew where this was going. Ma'am, I don't work here. My supervisor is Sergeant Dan, not his real name, with department. I do not work for the store. At this point, Karen looks mad and is staring at me like I'm lying to her. Karen then yells, I swear, all people your age are just lazy and never want to help anyone. I want your manager now. I again inform her that I don't work for the business. I even pull out my credentials, which is a photo identification card of me in uniform, with the department name and logo and has officer under my photo. It should also be noted that I keep my driver's license and debit card in my credentials, since I have to have them on me at all times when I'm in public. Just makes it easier to keep everything together. Karen snatches my credentials out of my hand, stuffs them into her purse, and says, These are fake. I'm taking these and showing them to your manager and the real police. And I say, Ma'am, you have just committed simple robbery, which in my state is the taking of anything of value which is in the immediate control of another with force, but not armed with a dangerous weapon. Return my credentials now or I will be forced to place you under arrest, I said. You can't arrest me because you're not a cop. I remove my radio from my hip and inform the dispatcher that I need units to my location. Dispatcher acknowledges and I hear three units state they were en route. I place my radio back on my hip and tell Karen she is now being placed under arrest. As I go to grab her left wrist, she slaps me with her right hand saying, Don't touch me. Help, I'm being attacked. I notice people are now forming, wondering what was going on. I hear on the radio that the units are on scene and asking for my location. I press the radio button and give them my aisle. A few moments later, three fully uniformed officers show up. Officer 1 asks me what happened. I give him the rundown while Karen is spewing all sorts of lies about how I threatened her with my gun and how I attacked her to Officer 2. Officers 1 and 2 stay with us, while Officer 3 goes to the security office to play back the cameras. While waiting on Officer 3, I'm chit-chatting with the other two officers. I went through the police academy with one of them. We hear Officer 3 over the radio giving the go-ahead to the two other officers to arrest her. The two officers do so. As they're placing her in handcuffs and reading her her Miranda rights, she starts struggling and saying that she's innocent and that they should be arresting me for pretending to be a cop and attacking her. Officer 3 walks up to us with a copy of the camera footage, and all three walk Karen to the back seat of Officer 1's car. I spend the next few minutes explaining to the sergeant on duty who showed up about what happened and filling out a statement of the incident. Once everything was said and done, my credentials are returned to me. Karen is taken to jail and I go home. Update. I heard from the DA's office yesterday. Didn't have time to update due to work, but here we go. The ADA asked if I would drop the simple robbery charge to misdemeanor theft, which is up to six months in jail. Figuring this lady had no previous record, I agreed to it. They also dropped the disturbing the peace charge and the misdemeanor battery of a police officer charge due to no injuries. Can't really object, but hey, it is what it is. So now she's facing up to a year in jail. ADA says that if she pleads guilty to the charges, she will get a plea deal, where she'll have to spend a month in jail and the remainder on inactive probation. Which just means she doesn't have to do weekly or monthly check-ins. If she doesn't plead guilty and it goes to trial, she'll have to serve the whole sentence. My money is on her taking the plea deal. No, I really don't work here. This happened back in December last year, 2023, right after my late grandfather passed away. In mid-December, my final grandparent passed away. He was my mom's father. We were all very close and had moved him right down the street to be closer. It was a very painful loss. Me and my mother were the ones left to take care of everything as well. We needed to go out to the mall to buy outfits and accessories for family members. They had traveled from out of town and don't know the area and hadn't rented a vehicle. In my already depressed state, I decide I don't care what other people have to see. I throw on a pair of these giant baggy sweatpants of my husband's, bright green, so hideous, and a baggy dirty anime tee that I had been wearing for the last two days. We set out onto the first store in the mall, a plus size women's clothing store. I'm a plus size girl myself, but my baggy clothes definitely added to how big I looked. I was walking around with clothes and my mother went to the dressing room to set them all down. I grab one final black dress and head to the fitting room. As soon as I walk in, I look for the stall my mom went to. A woman is sitting in the waiting area portion of the dressing room. 
She looks up at me and immediately starts yelling at me about a red dress. I wasn't really listening. Not my circus, not my monkeys. I knock on my mom's stall door, say, hey mom, let me in. And the woman starts talking again, but louder and says, are you not capable of grabbing this red dress in a new size like I asked you to? This caught me completely off guard, so I just blankly stared at her while my hand is on the stall door. She cocks an eyebrow at me and I guess the expression on my face had her reassess her surroundings and situation. She stumbled over to the chair again and sat down and said, Oh, do you not work here? Now this lady has managed to really hit a button. I tell her, Do I look like I f***ing work here? What about me looks like I work here? Because I'm fat? Is that why you assumed I was an employee? She stumbled over her words. She definitely didn't know what to say. I had already snapped. I spent the entire time I was changing talking crap about her to my mom. I could hear a little sorry every once in a while from outside, but I was over it. I thought this would be my final I don't work here interaction given my situation. I was wrong. We moved on to another large chain department store to buy a bunch of assorted jewelry for family members to pick from. Me and my mom are cutting through the little girl's clothing section to avoid the busy Saturday aisle traffic. Out of nowhere, a woman grabs me by my arm. My mom stops with me after she sees me stopping. This old woman starts in on how these prices don't match what the sale sign says on the wall there. Again, I have this what the F face on and I look over at my mother who is standing right next to me and I say, are you f***ing kidding me? What about my appearance today screams I work at the mall? which cues the woman in on the fact that I, indeed, do not work there. She scrambled off quickly with no apology. Was I harsh? Probably. Will I ever want to go to the mall again? Probably not. Alright guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, have an awesome day, and I'll see you all next time.